All right, hello everybody, and welcome to the second never-ending train session within 24 hours, because we are so close to the end here, and we are going to speed run this shit, baby. I am Kai, your DM for the day, and would our three wonderful players like to introduce themselves and their characters, starting from the top and going down? Hi, I'm Foster, and I will be playing the art teacher very unfit to this setting, Cacao. We love him anyway. Yes. Um, and hide. Well, yeah, hi there. I am Morski Ej, but you're free to call me Morski. And I shall be playing as Hugh, my little wizard, who is uh, just trying to figure things out here. Oh my goodness, he came onto this train so recently. <laughs> <laughs> and last but certainly not least. Uh, hello, I am Staria, and I would be playing Sigil. Uh, Sig and she is, unlike everyone else, she has come to this train long ago. She wants out. And uh, she's the local uh, cryptid mom. So, yeah. <laughs> it's been a while Wonderful. since we've seen Sigil. Oh, I love them. And for anyone in the Hazelnut Gallery listening in, there are um, photo, like, sorry, I there is art of each of these characters in OOC game discussion, and for people listening to this later, I will put links to them in the description of the video. Um, for now, I do actually want to do a quick catch up with all your characters because uh, no matter how long it's been uh, in the real world between sessions, how long it will have been for your characters between their last carriage we saw them and this one is up to you guys and a little bit dependent on your character's mental state. You can kind of say they've gone immediately from their previous carriage into this one. Or maybe they have gone through a couple other carriages as well. Or maybe they've been here a while. Uh, so, Cacao, how have you been going? Oh, oh, well, good for you. Good question. Because the thing is, so he has definitely been through at least a couple carriages. Like, if you were to say one carriage is a day, he's been at, here for like a week or two, maybe at least. So... Um, the last time we were with him, the three of the people that he was with walked through the door, or more accurately, he was picked up alongside another person through the door by the third one. Yep. And somehow, you know, you know doors, you walk through it and you end up on the other side, but somehow, even though they all walked through at the same time, he ended up alone on the other side. And he's greatly upset by this because he spent so much time trying to survive the murder carriage yep. that he's been <laughs> separated from the other two. So even though he's more than willing to help the denizens of the train, he's also frantically trying to just like, oh, is there any trace of those other two people that I've been with? Yeah, it's always like, especially if you have gone through a couple of carriages now and you're realizing that you were just like increasingly alone, it's really not much fun. Yeah, no. Uh, but yeah, so if you've been through a couple, I can I, with that, like, hmm, I think you've probably been in like an okay ish mental state, if a bit increasingly worried that you haven't been able to find your friends. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you've been through a couple more carriages now, so you've got a bit more of an idea about how this whole train works. Um, and as you step out of this next door, can I get a perception check from you? Always start uh, perception, perception. I haven't exactly plus zero to perception, so that's going ah, to be Ah, always wonderful. Luck of the dice solely. A 13. <laughs> okay, we can work with that. But I will get back to you a bit later, because next up I want to check on Hugh. Um, how have you been? I'd say he hasn't been in too many carriages. He's still, like, relatively new. But hmm. honestly, he's been a bit disheartened with how the last carriage ended. Baby, baby he, boy. You murdered someone. Hugh, you, you murdered <laughs> someone. He didn't You're want to. Okay. He was... Uh, <laughs> it, the thing is, like, man, he was so close to dying in that fight, too. Like, one hit point, and that would have ended very different, differently, huh? Mm, true. But uh, he's, like, saddened because he was separated from his two new friends. And then the whole murder thing happened, but uh, 
he's like still determined and hopeful because there's the chance he could find his two new friends again, right? And he apparently needs to find his carriage if he wants to get off this train. Well, so it, one thing is you you would not actually know about you having a personalized carriage. You have no idea about how you would get off this train. You just know you're traveling through from carriage to carriage and going through all these strange environments and puzzles and problems and such with no idea as to where you'd be going. So for now, it's like a bit disheartened, but still determined. So he's trekking on, I'd say. Okay, that's that's not too bad. That's it's nice to have two people that are kind of probably in more or less even um, mental states, seeing as little seen compared to the last time we saw them. Uh, so yeah, Hugh, can I get a perception check from you as well? All righty. Get everyone Let's to get see all how this goes. The rolling out of the way before I uh, continue taking over the entire episode. That's another 13. <laughs> Thank you for being consistent. <laughs> <laughs> and Sigil, how about you? Oh boy. Well, Sigil would love to say she hasn't been keeping count, but she has, and this uh, nice carriage is exactly her 100th carriage. Ooh, and nice. And she is exhausted. Yes, technically, the car after each carriage, the door replenishes everything. But mentally, mm -hmm. she is exhausted. She wants, she really wants out. And this this train has taken has taken its toll on her a lot. Oof. Yeah, that's that's becoming more and more of a common theme with a lot of people in on the train at the moment. So, yeah, I'm sorry you've been stuck here for so long. You did choose this yourself, but no. Um, <laughs> oh, I know, I know. <laughs> but yeah, the good news is when you do step into this new carriage, there is a little bit of a difference because... You aren't alone anymore, but I'm also going to need a perception check from you as well before I can go into more detail than that. That's an eight. That's an eight. All right. Well, oh goodness. <laughs> we'll start with that eight. <laughs> Basically, what you, um, Sigil, as you step out of this door behind two other people, wait, what? That's the first thing you notice. Th there's two other people there. There's, and they, they, they look a bit odd. They don't seem to like quite fit. You haven't had a proper look around the environment, but it's very like shiny and white. And uh, this is very quite, you get the sense of space, but before you can have a proper look, you get distracted by the fact that th th there's two other people in front of you, like not denizens of the train, people. <laughs> Meanwhile, Cacao and um, Hugh, as you guys actually, um, you guys look around, you guys stepped out first at the same time, you kind of get a moment of realising, hey, wait, someone else just stepped out of the door with me. And then you look around and you find yourself in the centre of something that is probably a giant building but it's definitely not like anything you've seen before because it is glistening with glass and chrome and white white marble as long corridors stretch out in four directions there are strange metal staircases moving about and there's different floors of this building, but then like not walled off, they're open. This place is just very big and very shiny. You're not quite sure what's going on, but there is people. I will also say both of you do kind of glance out of like the corner of your eye, something rectangular and small and golden lying on the floor a couple of feet in front of you. But for now, go nuts. What do you three want to do? <laughs> So, uh, Sigil is immediately only looking at the other two. It's like, you two are alive? You're not part of the train, right? You're oh god, people, people, finally, finally real, real people, and not just trained people. Oh god, but that, that, what, wait, hold on, that means that there are, how many other people are out there? Oh god, I'm... I figured that it was only the three of us, but now there's more. Oh. And Hugh on his side is just, 
oh man, more people, and you just kind of see him brighten, <laughs> brighten up. He's happier. Oh. Uh. Hey, uh, Bofu, can the Bofu make a perception check? Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh uh, would this be perception or insight? Hmm. Oh. Well, it's to see. Okay. To see, like. Mm. It works for me, because he... <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Right, uh, that was a 17 from Kakao and a 7 from Hugh. <laughs> what a way to start. Uh, Which is amazing, because Hugh has a plus 5 to percent. Yeah, they have a plus 0. <laughs> <laughs> we know who the random number generator gods are favouring this episode. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, Hugh probably is distracted by all the shiny bright stuff. Kakao, you see that Sigil is starting to cry. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Please, so please, don't. please. Okay, Kakao is going to have, like, he doesn't, he's kind of, like, um, transfixed and, like, he doesn't really know how to react, but he's going to still come and uh, come to Sigil to try to comfort her, but he's kind of like, you know, that friend that doesn't really know how to interact, so he doesn't really know how to hug, so he's oh. kind of weirded out, and he's just Can going to be like, uh, okay, could you pl please, please, let's let's start with the basics, could you please tell me your you name? Two, you two are real. I, I, thought I, I thought I was going to be stuck here forever. <laughs> no, 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 you're not. Listen, we have the three of us here for now. Please, go go on, let's go with the basics. What is your name? Right, my apologies. I am Sigil. What is your name? Glad to meet you, Sigil. I'm Kakao. And you, kid, oh god, the kid here. Why is there a kid here? What's your name, kid? Oh, uh, my name's Hugh. Hugh Script. And I'm going to say at this, can I say that at this point, Hugh has noticed that Sh Sigil really isn't doing the best. So, like, he's going to come over close and, like, offer his hand if she wants to hold it. Uh, Sigil uh, takes the hand but isn't holding on to her cane thing. It's a street sign. You have no idea where she got it from. Uh, and, which is her the hand that is like a megaphone, but is also like kind of looks like a flame. I and mean, she's just like holding Q's hand. Yeah, and Q holds her right back. He he's not going to judge. <laughs> it's not. It's it's warm, but it's not like harmful warm. Like it's not too hot. Okay, so it's like nice and toasty, one could say. Yes. yes. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> okay, okay. So, okay, so Hugh and Sigil, great. So, uh, may I ask, how long have you been here in this train? Well, I don't, I don't know how time works here. But I have been counting my the carriages, unfortunately. Oh. This one is my, is the n number one hundred. Oh, a hundred? Dear, 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 dear. Yes. I uh I I haven't been here that long. I've maybe been through about seven carriages. Oh, bless you. Bless you. This train, this train is not safe for anyone, especially not someone you're... Oh, God, there are some... There are many a danger in this train. This is not... This is best if we all just stick together for whatever we have at hand here. And, okay, now we are going to... Kakao is going to have a glance again at the outside and just be... Whatever we have here, again. <laughs> He's he's going to nod and yeah, I, I'd appreciate if we could go forwards together. And I then agree. he's like going to get that exclamation point and go, Oh right, there there was something golden and shiny. Should we pick that up? Uh sure. Let's let's before picking anything up, let's just have a look at it. Okay. Yeah. All right. You take a closer look. I won't make you. I mean, 
actually, yeah, roll me investigation mm. to see how much uh, extra detail you will pick up that I, I will mm. say you, you're going to get something no matter what. Ooh, I have a plus two for this. And I have a plus six <laughs> at 23. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> nice, 23 what is 17. Uh, investigation. Uh, what's my investigation? Plus two. That's not too bad. It's like, and this is why you have and a, a wizard, 14. folks. All right. <laughs> That's not too bad. All right, with that, all three of you um, take a closer look at this small thing on the floor. It's kind of golden and like a little bit fake looking it's not shiny enough or it doesn't look heavy enough for it to be metal but it certainly looks like fake metal it's uh rectangular with rounded corners and it's probably about the size of like the palm of your hand maybe a tiny bit smaller um cacao as you're kind of looking you also notice that hey there seems to be some sort of strange lettering or number or just strange symbols kind of printed into it like pushed through it um and with that 23 hue you're kind of looking at this and like you can't read the writing you don't even know if it is writing and not just strange squiggles because it doesn't look quite real you're having a closer look and while like maybe a quick skim of it would say oh yeah this is something that's been specifically made there's something in the back of your brain that's looking at this and noticing how it isn't quite perfectly symmetrical and how like the ridges of the symbols and everything don't quite in they're not quite even it's not quite completely straight it kind of gives you um the feeling that maybe this is something that was grown rather than manufactured Really sus. Oh, that's not weird at all. All right. <laughs> well, Hugh, you if you, it's up to Hugh if uh you guys yeah. if you the rest of you find out that little extra tidbit, but <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say Hugh looks at this and like he's confuzzled and he's gonna then mention it to the other two. Can he just pick it up? Yeah, absolutely. He's gonna pick it up and then say this bit of info he figured out. Sure thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as you pick it up, you have like in the background you have cacao that has like kind of like a movement that is repressed of like trying to like no child, please do not pick up the strange thing. Can I roll like I don't know, nature? Uh yeah, if you want to. It's not good, but oh never mind, that's a nat one. That's nice. Okay, we <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah with that yeah you're kind of like looking at this and as you are now like you you can pick it up you can touch it a little bit you kind of give it a little bit of a wobble and it, it like it's definitely far too lightweight for it to be any sort of metal um but it kind of reminds you a little bit of oof you've you've seen how in some places how um, various tree saps and everything get processed and like sometimes they create this kind of lightweight material that might Ember? Sorry? no 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 that, that's more that's more fossilized it's kind of like it the, the oils and everything of it get processed and it creates this thing and you're fairly sure it's called plastic plastic sounds about right and it kind of reminds you of that, but it also kind of feels a little bit softer than what you've seen before. Like, again, when I say grown, that's going to be the closest thing. You can't, with a 20 though, you can kind of tell that maybe this isn't, hmm, this is kind of something that feels like it's been put together in a Petri dish, like it's been, uh, artificially grown but also this isn't so again it's not something manufactured i can't really describe it better than that <laughs> all right uh sigil's so gonna relay all that to the other two well very, that's definitely this new although my last experience with organic things have not been the most pleasant oh dear <laughs> so yeah. we so let's let's re let's recapitulate. So we have this 
oh, strange item. And we have a whole bunch of stairs, hallways, and floors. Mm -hmm. Makes me think um, a bit of a labyrinth of some kind. I mean, if it is a labyrinth, it's it's a very widely spaced and open labyrinth. There's plenty of walkways. There's even, like, some strange metallic sculptures that vaguely resemble palm trees down the middle of the walkways. Um, and, like, as I said before, like, everything is, like, white marble, chrome, and glass. And alongside, like, the walls, they don't seem to just be sheer walls. It seems to be glass, and behind that... You haven't had a closer look yet, but there does look like there are things behind the walls. Mm -hmm. Can he See, try and take a look at what behind at what's behind the walls? Yeah, roll me investigation again. This is going to be, get, be a okay. game that starts off with a lot of like, "Hey, roll to look at this." <laughs> <laughs> investigation time. All right, that's, Ooh, a, that's 25. a twenty-five. Nice. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> with, with that, you have a closer look, and yeah, this—that's the closest place. Looks like there are strange. Basically, there are mannequins there, dressed in very pretty clothing. And you look over at the next one, and that one just seems to be a bunch of, like, colourful pieces of art and small little statuettes, and another one that seems to contain a bunch of board games. And you're looking around at, and, at these endless stretches of items behind glass, and some doors leading into it, because you also notice that, hey, there's doors leading into all these little room-type places you're going in, and it reminds you a lot of, like, shops along a high street, but far too clean and shiny and abandoned. I can't believe we're in a ghost shopping mall. I mean, basically, yeah. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> then I've been, I will that... admit, I've been purposely uh, explaining it really strangely because, again, we're talking from D&D &D era stuff. You guys maybe get stuff up yeah. to maybe about the 50s. This is like, have you ever been in a shopping mall that is tries to be so futuristic and clean and shiny and sharp and oh, all that sort of stuff? Oh, absolutely. Oh my yeah. goodness. That is going to be so alien to um, people that are used to kind of D&D slash toon titles of world. <laughs> and the, yeah. in, again, these are toons. Like, yeah. I'm Quill. Look at this. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well. To sterilize. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I will say he's going to relate this, like, or he's just going to point it out to the other two. So, so, that's peculiar, so, to say the least. So you say it's abandoned. I mean, looks to be. There, it's completely I mean, empty. look at this place. There's nothing here apart from all this stuff behind the walls. Sigil is very tempted to start firing at things. I'll have you know. <laughs> oh no! I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> 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 okay, so so you mentioned that there are doors leading into those spaces. So Kakao is going to get closer to those doors and try to see if there is like any mean to open them or not. There doesn't seem to be any door handle um, or anything you can grab as you go up to these weird, uh, mm. again, more glass nonsense. But as you step yeah. closer, you just hear a ding and two sheets of glass just slide open and leaving a nice entryway for you to enter this store? Oh, that's fucking sus. <laughs> yeah, it's like I was going to have like Kind of like a step back at the ding. <laughs> yep, as you step back... He is going to go say... over to Cacao and look like... He's going to step forward in curiosity. Yeah, I will say, as as uh, Cacao kind of stepped back, it takes a second, but then the doors close again. Then Hugh comes up, steps forward, ding! Doors slide open again. <laughs> Sergio's like coming with and she, and she's just like knocking on the on the glass panels just like what is this well at least we have one way to open this i guess 
I mean, it's also glass. Worst case scenario, we can just smash something. Hopefully, we won't, we won't have to, though. Hopefully I not. Suppose. And she walks in. All right. Um, what type of store do you want to have just walked into? Do we want to just go default and say it's clothing? Yeah. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Let's go. The nearest store seems to be a uh, high fashion uh, it's a lot of women's, like, a lot of various, like, brightly coloured dresses. You've got the ones that are posed on the mannequins at the front. And then after that, on the inside, it's just, uh, rows and rows of, like, clothing hanging from hangers that are posed about the store. And comes in every colour and style you can imagine, but who boy, does it look a little bit odd compared to the fashions you're more used to. Can I... That he goes to, like, explore around, and you know how, as a kid, you always get lost in the high rows of clothes and stuff? Yeah. Can I roll survival to to see? It's gone. (laughs) Yeah, can I? I'm going to roll survival to see how long it's huge in the clothes. That's a, that's a okay, dirty that's... twenty. Okay, yeah, no, you, you you manage to not get lost, but you vanish quite effectively. <laughs> oh yeah. no, they, they, the cow is definitely going to be very distressed by that because this is again like this is another small thing that he's he has latched onto, and he is he has already disappeared. You, <laughs> where are you? Uh, you, I'm where, over please. here. And where is he? <laughs> He was like, I'm over here, and you, like, from a couple of rows down, you see from a couple of clothes just, like, a hand waving up. How did you get there so so quickly? I I just walked. <sighs> Next time, how will you tell us before you wander off? We don't want to lose each other. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. Sorry for worrying you two. Sure. And he's and like she gonna rub the back head of his head. She she pats his head and goes to like investigate it. I guess like what the hell is this place? It it's just clothing. It's just a, it's just a clothing store. <laughs> are there any like are there any like train residents? Here, or is it just like literally just a a ghost mall? Completely empty. There seems to be a counter where, um, like a till is and everything, but like there's no one standing behind it. There's no one, uh, tidying the place or putting out new clothing. Other than you three, this whole place is empty. So just gonna go to the counter, just like start like looking at things, just like lifting things up, just like trying to understand what the fuck is is this what is happening describe your ideal piece of clothing hmm for sigil Hmm. for sigil like what what's something that you reckon sigil would really really like to wear a big cloak hmm Okay, considering fashions and everything, I don't think you find a big cloak as such, but you do come across this absolutely gorgeous long coat in, like, what's your favourite colour? Hmm, her favourite... Red. In a deep, deep red. So you find this beautiful billowy cloak. It has quite, um, like, wide sleeves, long flowing cut, they'll hit, like, all the way down, um, to your like calves really in terms of length it's got some beautiful buttons all down the side so it can uh keep you nice and warm but yeah like you're looking around and i think that catches your eye so so you're just like all right if we get if i get attacked uh learn from my example and don't touch the clothes and she's what gonna do you mean t- if we get attacked and she's gonna pick up the clothes without, <laughs> without further warning Oh no, because at those words, Kakao is definitely going to have like to reach like a hand to kind of like get you closer to him. Oh. <laughs> Congrats, Hugh, you have new parents now. <laughs> yeah, this is amazing. I love this. Yes, you have been adopted. Yeah. <laughs> 
but yeah. It's like, like family outing at the spooky ghost mall. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, you can pick up this uh, coat, no problem. You can try it on, there's no problem. The one thing that's a little bit annoying is there's like this another chunk of like plasticky stuff that's kind of stuck in the collar, uh, and it kind of digs into your neck a little bit, but it's not so much that you can't try on this coat and look really cool in it. It's super comfy and it looks amazing, and you catch the sight of it in the mirror and wow, you look so cool. Good news, I have, I have not been evaporated yet, so I think the clubs are safe. Looks like it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> He's like just going to clap a bit, like, it looks great on you. And she's gonna do a little bow. <laughs> Well, it does, it definitely does look good on you. So, we have a bunch of clothes and no door in sight, whether it's a relief or not. Any, do you, uh, like, he's going to turn up to you? Well, I mean, as long as we're here, you might, if you feel like a change in wardrobe, now's your time. And he's like going to think I'm pondering like what could he get? Maybe a hat? He doesn't have a hat. Yeah, there's a shelf there's a shelf of hats like uh, across the thing. I'm not certain what sort of styles you might want because this is only like one small stall in this giant building that you seem to be in. Uh, but at least in this place, like, yeah, there, there are a couple of hats. You've got a few sun hats. Uh, there's a couple of caps that seem to have, like, little diamantes stuck onto them. Uh, <laughs> what, what sort of thing are you looking for? Can I say that Hugh finds, like, one of those little winter caps and they're just, like, their cat ears stuck on it? Yes, oh absolutely. You know, those kind of caps. <laughs> yes. Hugh, finds a, Hugh finds a blue one with, like a red pom-pom on it and he just takes it and Perfect. puts it on his head i love it yes, what do you, do you think <laughs> looks lovely sigil claps <laughs> he like he beams brightly and he's going to go back to the other two well i suppose uh do you want anything cacao mm, yeah i'm um... I mean, I definitely could use something new, but... Uh, okay, one question. Uh, does, like, the counter looks like something that Toons could recognize as a counter or not? Yeah, it's, like, a pretty recognizable bench mm. with something that looks like a, a rather newfangled sort of till, and there seems to be, like, a little device next to it uh, with little numbers mm. and a little slidey slot next to it, uh, but it's uh, overall, like, yeah, you can recognize it as a till. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the the question that I'm so I definitely could use some new clothes, but the one thing that I'm worried about is that this may be some sort of store, considering that there seems to be a counter over there, and all those clothes, and yet no seller or shopkeep is to see. Really weird. That, that is like... a worry, especially since there are there are. I have met citizens on this train, but I, oddly enough, there aren't here any here yet. Mm -hmm. Like, even if no one's here, we still wouldn't want to steal, and there are these weird plastic things on the no, on these clothes, so... Yeah, you are correct. Like, maybe something's up with them. It'll prevent stealing, maybe? I don't know. Like, do we need to pay for these? How could we even pay for them, though? That is a bad question. I am not... Sh I mean, it's difficult to assess if they would accept gold coins or not here. He's, like, going to have a light bulb moment, and... Uh, who would you say has the gold bar thing? Hugh still, or... Uh, I don't know. Um, which of you was looking at it last? 
I think Sigil, like, hold, held it last. Okay, yeah, mm. Sigil's got it then. All right. Yeah, uh, m maybe the gold bar could help with this? I mean, we found it there, and it seems to come from here. I oh, you are right. And she's gonna go up uh, to the, like, counter and, like, put the gold bar thing on, on there. She, she has no idea what to do with it. Just, like, she just places it. Okay. As you place it there, uh, do you just kind of like wait and watch it for a little bit, or? What? Yeah, I'm just like wait and watch. Just like, hmm. All right. As as you watch, it takes a couple of seconds, but you kind of start seeing the little piece of plastic shuffle slightly towards the small black machine next to the till. Do you keep watching, or uh, do you pick it up and do something? Uh, she's gonna, she's gonna use Mage Hand to hold it. <laughs> <laughs> Valid. Yes. I mean, that's fair. And she slowly inches it, it towards the like the black box thing. Yep. As I get close, it Dead. seems to want to go near it, where it's like. There seems to be a slot where the card looks like it would fit in absolutely perfectly, and it seems to want to go in there. I the just hole was like, made what for this it. Is. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I just realized it's a <laughs> credit card. Yeah, yeah, it's a goblin credit card. Congrats, guys! We got the credit card. Yeah. Nice. Go, go, fucking nuts. <laughs> Shopping. This is a shopping carriage. <laughs> Amazing, incredible. This so, is what I. This is what I. I do nice things for my players sometimes. 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 <laughs> Thank you. I, like I figure it's fair since they got traumatized last time. They can have something nice this time. Oh, yeah. That's a yeah. treat. That's a treat. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, so you're gonna, gonna put it in there because, like, well, if it wants to go in there, it yeah, might as well. You pop it through into the slot, and there's a couple of seconds, and it goes beep, and the so, something that you're assuming is maybe a screen of some kind, uh, lights up green on that on the little machine, and yeah, what do you do? She Green means pocket. good, so at least nothing bad has happened yet, which is a relief. Yet. I the good word? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I suppose. And she's going to uh, try going out the uh, out of the mall. Well, she doesn't know it's a, it's like it's a shop, but like she's gonna try and go out to the, the main hall. Yeah, if you head back out to the main area, um, you well, actually notice that as you're walking, that little plasticky tag stuck to the collar of the clothing falls off, um, like, on its own, after you've put your card in. And yet, you can walk out, and you're back in, like, the main hallways of this giant shopping centre. And, yeah, yeah, there's still hundreds of other shops here that you could go into and check out if you want to. Well, I, I think I think it is safe. Looks like it. <clears throat> okay, so cool. yeah, Kakao is definitely going to go out. Um, yeah, go out of the shop alongside uh, Stigil. Yeah, and he is going to follow them. Probably just like put his nice new hat in his hammer space so he doesn't lose it. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, where do you want to go next? Oh, actually, can I quickly check? What are you guys' passive perceptions? Uh, 13. Okay. A whopping 10. Ten. 15 for you. <laughs> okay, Hugh, you are the only one that notices this, and it still takes you a second or two to notice, but things are identical to how they were before you went into that store, uh, because out of the corner of your eye, you catch, like, a glint of shining metal, and, like, this tiny bit of, and you hear, like, this... A tidiest bit of sound at the edge of your hearing of squeak, 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 squeak. And as you turn your head to look at it, 
you see this strange contraption look, looking like a giant basket made of shining metal wire on wheels. And it's just kind of sitting in the middle of a hallway, um, like on the other side of the entrance door from you guys. It's really sus. And uh, Hugh is, I guess Hugh is closest to Cacao at this point. Hugh's going to tug on Cacao's sleeve and like point out, hey, what do you think that is? Oh, I've never seen anything even remotely close to that. It looks like a cart of sort, but made out of metal? So she's gonna poke it with Mei Chan again. <laughs> it, like, it, it, as you kind of like, yeah, you give it a poke, the wheels kind of seem to turn around and it moves a couple of inches in whatever direction you've poked it in. But, no, it seems completely still. Alright, I don't think we want to mess with that. Uh... I mean, my question is, it? where does it come from? Because I don't remember seeing this around. Hmm, that is a bad question. Like, as far and, as like, you're concerned... Can we ride it? Uh, I mean, yeah, you can if you want. The wheels seem to work just fine. Uh, and also, uh, like, as far as you're concerned, you don't think it was there before, but also there's a lot of weird shiny stuff in this yeah. place, so you can't be certain. Yeah. Hugh's going to take a step closer. I'm... And I guess get on, take a look. Yeah. Abs uh, can I actually get a quick um, dexterity roll from you? Just to see how like you manage to climb in. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, what does Hugh's... Oh, no. Hugh has a plus two to dexterity. Let's see how this goes. That's a 10. <laughs> okay, okay, so I think what happens here is you kind of stomp up on whatever frame at the very bottom is kind of holding all the wheels there. And you lift your leg up over the edge of the weird wire basket to hop in, and, but then the moment you start putting your weight down, it overbalances because you've gone in from the side rather than the front or the back, and it's the wheels are kind of close together, so the whole kind of trolley... Uh, tips over and you kind of get knocked out and it's just lying on its side now. You've not taken any damage it was just, ah, well, that didn't work, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, and I'm guessing that this is pretty loud in a completely silent mall, so like oh, the absolutely. sound will definitely have cacao running like, oh, Hugh, no, what have you done? <laughs> big, big, <laughs> big okay? clatter. <laughs> so like, no, not the child. <laughs> yes. Sigil's definitely going slightly slower, not because she's not hurrying, but because she's she is heavily not not heavily, but like slightly leaning on the the street sign that she has, and she's like, oh dear. Well, maybe maybe we shouldn't touch this cart thing. I, I will say, uh, Hugh, what you can like, you knew that it falling over was solely due to your clumsiness. Like, it there was just because, oh dear, this thing overbalanced. That was it. Whoop. Oh. Uh, yeah, Hugh's going to get up a bit embarrassed, and uh, can he try and write it back up? Yeah, it's pretty lightweight. Uh, even though it's metal, because it's such thin wire, it's light enough weight that you can easily write it again. I mean, yeah, I mean, in in this case, Kakao is definitely going to like help the kid get in the cart if he if he wants to so badly. <laughs> yeah, Sigil will help as well. All right, in that case, I won't make anyone roll. Uh, you guys can just help basically lift Hugh up, and Hugh, you are now inside a shopping trolley. Congrats! <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> So Do you guys want to join me or like, we could probably oh. use this to cart stuff around. Oh, you're right. I, I feel like at least one of us should be behind pushing it because the three of us inside isn't going to do much in terms of moving around. Hmm. You're, that is correct. 
I, however, I do not have much in the strength department, so. That's I mean, fine. That's this fine. thing is Let's very easy it. to move because it's yeah. so lightweight and like it has wheels. It is very easy to move around. I'm also going to say that Hugh is also very light, <laughs> so you won't need to worry about carrying him around either. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> So, where to next? I guess. Well, I suppose nothing. We the only other thing we can do is look for any other places. Exploration oh. time. Yeah. And is there any, anything that resembles like magic stuff or like looks like magic? Hmm. I reckon if you want, it's not. It doesn't seem magic exactly, but you do come across a store that is just filled with uh, crystals and has got little stained glass things of fairies stuck to the uh, window of the store. And it's kind of just, it's one of those places that seems to ooze glitter. <laughs> <laughs> he is looking with starry eyes as they pass by. Do you want to go in? Yes. <laughs> in we go. In you go. You find yourself in a store that, yeah, it's crystals and little statues of baby dragons and it's got swooshy pieces of fabric and, yes, just glitter, glitter everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> what sort oh of things God. are you looking for? Short kid would love this place. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know, is there like, you've mentioned the glass statues of dragons and stuff, is there a glass statue of a bird? Hmm, <laughs> I reckon it takes you a little bit of searching, but eventually, yeah, you actually find one that is like a bird, like just about to take flight off a, of a branch. Um, it's made of less like completely see-through crystal, so... Q is going to carefully place it in the cart with him. Hell yeah. <laughs> Do you two want anything from here? This all is so neat. So Jill's is very, it? like, in <laughs> is looking more more at the craftsmanship than the act than just like, oh, I want this. Because it's like, it's very impressive. It's like very pretty stuff. It is all very pretty. There's some, you know, there's some gorgeous jewelry. There's a little tray advertising itself as mood rings, able to sense your mood just simply by wearing it. Um, there, again, oh. you guys know, you guys know exactly the sort of store I'm talking about, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's the sort of place. There's like a bunch of decks of cards that claim to be tarot decks and all of that. <laughs> Uh, is there Amazing. a is there a pile of strange twenty sided rocks with numbers on them? I don't. <laughs> mm. I don't think there is because that's not really the sort of mm. thing you find in specifically ah yes crystal healing type stores. I reckon that if you went into a different store, you could definitely find it, uh, but not in this one. <laughs> Amazing. I found, some, I found some in like crystal shops. It's just like ah uh, yes, I found just like a pile of them there. I was like, oh okay. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I don't think you find any quite in this store. But I will say, you're going to walk out of this store completely covered in glitter. Even if you haven't touched anything, you're going to be covered in glitter. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Lovely. All right. Yeah. What else do you right. want? Do you want cool things? Oh, I will say, Sigil, you like, even though you have got your new coat now, which is still really badass, um, here, if you wanted fancy cloaks, this is the sort of store that you would find them in. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine, just like, plus, um, Cacao is driving the cart, Hugh is sitting inside with his little bird statue and Sigil walking beside him, and then the camera pans to, like, the <laughs> hangers with cloaks, and then Sigil is just like, ding. 
attention so has arrived here. Baby. I love this. <laughs> I'm trying to think what cool stuff, like what stuff, like our D and D time, like D and D era uh, tunes would find in a modern, uh, <laughs> like a, a modern, uh, what's it called, a, a modern mall. Yeah. It's like. What, but like, what did they will find cool? Oh my god, Liz, you genius. Oh god, Liz, what did you, what? What, what? I love oh. the way looking at the Hazelnut Lava Gallery. Lamps. What did Liz put? <laughs> yes. Fantasy Hot Topic, Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah, guys, I will say you probably do come across like a mattress store at some point. You can just lie down and have a sleep if you want. But yeah, lava lamps. <laughs> I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, and that's also the sort of thing that would probably be in this store at some point. So. Amazing. <laughs> Incredible. I'm like, he would be heavily tempted to jump on the mattress, but that's probably rude. He better yeah. not. <laughs> uh, I will say that for now you are still in this one store. Do you guys want to head out and keep exploring? Or and is there anything you want to do first? Or is it just... um? Like, are you just heading out can now? He, can uh, I actually, yeah. can he take one of the mood rings? Because, like, he would find that neat, too. Yeah. Just, like, uh, he's going to take one of the rings then, add it to his, uh, well, add it along with the glass bird to the stuff he now has. Oh, perfect. Uh, just sitting in the trolley. Yes, you have a mood ring now. All right, did you head out? Yay. Or any last things that you wanted to do here? Um... Okay, so here's the thing. On one hand, I know that we need to pay. On the other hand, I really want, I kind of want to know what happens if we don't. <laughs> Go with what the in-character choice would be. Hmm. Sigil so is the adult. She will pay. Like, she doesn't know, like, here's the thing. She doesn't know that it's, like, paying, but she does know that... After she did the thing and it turned green, nothing bad happened. So she's gonna keep doing it. <laughs> a good choice. All right. Yep. You once again put the card in a strange little machine that is next to the till, and it lights up green. And yeah, you guys can head out if you want. All right. Hugh is just very cheerfully <laughs> sitting in the cart. Like, there's probably still some glitter on his head and coat, but oh. you just see him smiling with the stuff in his arms. Oh. <laughs> That's so good. Okay. Well well done, Hugh. You get new things. Cacao, just wondering, <laughs> what sort of things do you want? <laughs> Well, yeah, that's what that's kind of what I was thinking about because uh, obviously, like he's much more like kind of artsy inclined. So, like the the glitter and crystal shops is very nice, but it's not like exactly the kind of items that he would look for in particular. So, yeah, it it would be like more kind of an art and craft store essentially that would get his attention i mean you can absolutely come across like a craft store if you want you find like there's lots yes. of different colored paints and brushes and everything in the front window there's glues and craft paper and uh canvases and anything that you could want some very fancy pencils there's uh like glitter glue <laughs> <laughs> Like, can I say as well, like, after going out to the magic shop, he would turn around to Cacao and ask him, like, is there a place he wants to go to? Because uh, he and Sigil have gotten something, but Cacao hasn't. Like, he doesn't want to have him feel left out. I mean, yeah, but he doesn't really feel left out. He's just, like, kind of, you know, going through the motion. He's... A He's enjoying that, you know, no weird noises, no scorching green light. Like, this is fine. Yeah. <laughs> He's I just think going through the motions. This whole place is real chill. I will say, as you guys are kind of exploring, you do uh, come across a handful more of the wire basket wheelie things as you are walking about. They just seem to be sitting in, uh, like, the walkways around the shopping centre. Um, nothing more exciting than that, really. I wonder if there used to be people here and something happened. Oh. <laughs> Good question. 
Do we really want to know the answer to this question? And also a good question. <laughs> because <laughs> oh like you know like Kekau is enjoying this and now that you bring this up he's like oh <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> you is especially bothered because this this entire train seems to be just a little cursed anyway so he's like ha, that, I mean that's a yeah question what's like, a little bit of curse between friends <laughs> You know, yeah, <laughs> especially considering that, again, Kakao has had experiences with abandoned places that used to have people yep. <laughs> that didn't went as smoothly. <laughs> so, you know, you bringing this up definitely will have him be a bit more nerved now. Oh. But, yeah, no, like, again, like, if there is, like, a craft store that they come across, he will definitely suggest like the other two hey would you fancy having a look inside yeah sure i don't mind grand cool. and yeah he's definitely going to go out and about and explore the different aisles absolutely yeah there's paints of all different kinds there's wonderful packs of colorful pencils and also pencils with different like softnesses um my mind is now instantly blanking on anything that like a craft That's store fine. would potentially or, contain but <laughs> okay one of the things that he's definitely going to look for is uh origami paper absolutely yes oh. it has it in so many hundreds of different patterns i'm like um, i'm thinking you could probably find stickers and notebooks uh, yeah. and stuff yeah definitely I'm... lots of sketchbooks and nice papers yeah, and so again, like Kekao is going to walk to the aisle with like all the different kinds of paper and go like, "Ooh, well now that is really really interesting because the the you see one of the last things that I were working on before getting here was this, and I'm going to actually roll for hammer space because who doesn't want a good potential for fumble? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <no. laughs> <laughs> and he does indeed manage to get out of his hammer space a an origami shield. But, you know, it's not like an origami that's origami size. It's like an origami shield that's the size of an actual shield. Whoa. That's, that's to be a cool. big piece of paper. Cool. Yeah. Hugh, Hugh is, like Hugh says, that looks really cool. And he has, like, the sparkly eyes again. Well, He's definitely... Sigil's so definitely ahead. looking at it, and she's, like, interested, because, hmm, that's, he's like, is that functional? Like, I mean, I haven't really tested this, because the thing is that just before getting into wherever this is, the, that was the, my last obsession, essentially. I just can't, got lucky enough to come across this model that was thought to be lost to time and I managed to get this done and I really enjoy it so I might snatch a couple of those fancy more paper for when I get back home yeah there's plenty of paper it comes in like all different colors and sizes you get like some of the really itty bitty little pieces of paper that are only like a couple of inches and then you get some of the ones that are basically the size of an a3 piece of paper but still lightweight enough <laughs> that it still works for origami it's yeah it's whatever you want yeah no i mean like he's definitely going to grab like a couple of sheets with like fancy patterns and everything wonderful yeah himself else? just a little paper crane oh <laughs> yes perfect he's baby. going to gift it to cacao then oh, oh cacao. thank you oh. like like cacao is going to treasure this to no end you have no idea oh. <laughs> he puts it in his hammer space but like he doesn't put it in, a, in his hammer space right away he just like Pull out the box, then put the origami in the box, and then pull it back in the other space to not damage it. So, Sigil sees this, and she's like, she's trying to copy Hugh's movements, but she's kind of like stumbling a bit. And it's like, because she's not very good at that de dexterity stuff. So, it's like, 
It's a little misshapen. It's Can like... Like, you help her a bit? <laughs> I'll tell you what, yeah. roll me dexterity, and we'll see how good your crane is, Sigil. <laughs> uh, what's my dex? My dex is plus one. That's not atrocious. Yeah. That's a oh, 19! No. <laughs> no, this crane comes out beautifully, Amazing. what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah, she kinda okay. like she she hands it to uh she hands it to Cacao. Well, I am extremely grateful for your attention. I'll treasure it just as much as yours, you and again pulls out a box and put it in his hammer space to make sure that it doesn't get squished or damaged. This even so though cute. a hammer space worked differently, but still I love She's that. She's so cute. Well, Hugh, Hugh is just smiling really brightly at this, like, man, he really likes his two new friends. He hopes he can stick with them. Sigil does too. Sigil will die for these two people. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that, you may jinx it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Please don't. <laughs> Look, I'm just here to be ominous. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a fantastic job, yes. thank you. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, with that said, I think that Kakao is going to like give a sign to Sigil to head to the counter to make sure that they pay before leaving again. And she does. Yeah, you guys, yeah, you can pay for the thing again, the thing lights up green. And basically, you're good to go. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Is there like a second floor to the mall or is it just like one big floor? Yeah, there is a second floor. Uh, so far, the only notable ways that you've seen getting up are the strange moving, like strange metal moving staircases that you've seen scattered about somewhere. Um, but there is another way if you guys have another good look for it as well okay i'm go shall i roll perception for this i would uh, actually say i would say investigation seeing as you're specifically looking around for a thing well that's cool. an, an 18. 18. nice okay yeah Ooh. As you guys are looking around, you notice that near most of where like the moving staircases are, there's usually another a uh, little entrance and it's kind of like a small doorway that the walkways up above seem to loop around and there's these strange glass pods that are moving up and down within this area and right next to the doors to one of those pods are some buttons. You going to point that out then just a uh, hi like do you think we could use those to get up? It might be hard to pull this trolley thing up the moving stairs. Oh, Alright, oh. so... Sigil so kind of shrugs and goes to it. But it's like, she has no idea what this is. She has no idea what anything in here is. But like, might as well. Everything seems fairly harmless so far, so yeah, we might try. All right, yeah. Don't oh, jinx no, it. <laughs> That's going to jinx it, Cacao. Okay, oh, amazing. Well. Yeah, there is. As you press the button, there's like, like a couple of seconds of of like the humming of something moving within the walls, and you see the like a glass pod lowering down in front of the doors, and you hear a ding and the doors open and there's another one of the weird wire carts already sitting in it already sitting in the lift but it's easy enough to kick out of the way if you guys want yeah that's really sus yeah it's that's making me um, think and, uh, that people were shopping and stuff so like bad. normal and then suddenly they disappeared hey question are are all of the carts empty yep completely empty Okay. Hmm. 
Like, the only cart that you guys have come across that has stuff in it is the one that, like, currently contains Hugh and, like, Hugh's little toys, so... But yeah, you guys can get upstairs nice and easily. Again, it's a bit strange to stand in this thing. Like, you guys will have encountered, uh, like, lifts and elevators before. Once you're So once you're inside it, it's recognisable enough, other than, okay, yeah, this design is a bit shiny and weird. Um, and yeah, you guys get upstairs with no problem. Again, the doors go ding as they open and you're on the top floor. I can da -na -na -na. The team has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> We have gone up one floor. <laughs> Success. Uh, so, are are there like just more more shops? Yeah, more shops of every single kind. There's so many shops about fashion. There's jewelry stores. There's uh, like game stores. There's like more arts and crafts centers. There's stores that you're not even quite sure what they're doing, but they seem to show a lot of photos of uh, lots of different environments and places and cities and such. And you're not sure they're all entirely real. And like literally any store that you can imagine, you will find in here, as well as a bunch of stores that you've probably never even thought about before. <laughs> I will say though, you can't seem I... to find the food court. <laughs> Oh, Aww. Aww. <laughs> man, I was going to suggest, like, I was going to say, like, maybe Hugh's stomach rumbles or something, just, it, it doesn't matter if they don't get hungry on the train, it's probably, probably been, like, those whole, uh, seven carriages Hugh has been in, he hasn't eaten anything since the first one, so, like... Well, like you don't actually. Whenever you go through one of the doors, um, it's like a full recovery sort of thing. So you wouldn't. So each time you go through a door, you no longer feel hungry or anything. But uh, you have probably been wandering around this place for a little while now. Yeah, I'm gonna say maybe just you hear someone's stomach rumbling. Mm. It was you. <laughs> Well, I suppose we should find ourselves a place to eat if this... Well, I don't know if this place actually has any... I haven't any, seen any, any food, yet. But it's either that or we go to the door. What door? Yeah, I haven't... You haven't found one yet? Yeah. I know, like, Wait. she, she's like... We, we, she is meant like, find the door. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, good point. And he's just a little bit embarrassed that his stomach crumpled like that. But, uh, well. Would there be a map of this place? You haven't found one yet. Uh, in fact, can I actually get, like, survival rolls from you guys, please? <laughs> Oh, my oh yes. That is ominous. well, of course. That's a twelve. Nice. A five oh. and a twelve. Oh, wait, no, 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 wait, no. Okay, no. Probably ten. That's, oh, no, yeah, that's the, fair. my bad. Oh. My bad. Uh. <laughs> so, a twelve, a five, and a five. <laughs> Uh, no, so, 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 oh yeah, no, yeah. so it's still a five no matter look the dice gods know what yeah. you're meant to get for like faster <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah you guys have a look around um and you're fairly sure you more or less know the way back that you came but you're also kind of taking a moment and looking around and you're not certain you're not a hundred percent sure which way you've come from or which way you're really meant to be going and you kind of realize now at this point, this place is a bit of a maze. As big as the walkways are, as open and uh, inviting each of the shops are, this whole place is very easy to get lost in. Well, bet you're not probably. up here. This is quite troubling. Hmm. Oh god, I I should have had a bit of a look at the environment. I wasn't paying attention enough. Oh. 
for now, should we like try going forward a little bit more before trying to find our way back to the beginning? Like, we we should also try and find either a place where we can get food or the exit door, right? Yes, as far as my understanding goes, it's highly unlikely that the door, the exit is right next to where you usually end up in this carriage, so might as well push forward, I guess. Oh, yes, that would be advisable. However, I am wondering, perhaps there is something to this place that we're still missing. There may, the, given this train, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pass it. Sigil doing a think. And what this means out of character is Sigil's wondering whether she, in order to pr proceed forwards, we need to break things. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> you guys do what you like, I cannot stop you. <laughs> I saw that ominous dice roll, Kai. <laughs> it was a one, you why are you concerned? You also got a net one on yeah. it. <laughs> you shouldn't be concerned, I don't know what you're talking about, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's really ominous. It's yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say that like Kakao hasn't like isn't moving the cart just yet because like he like he feels bad for not paying attention enough and getting lost, and so he just wants to regroup and rethink everything with the others. Okay. As you guys are kind of... Hugh is sitting in the cart, so... Yeah. As you guys are kind of standing slash sitting there, just thinking, looking around, wondering what to do, you guys hear the, the, the sounds of, like, wheels squeaking, and it sounds very similar to the sort of, to the um, noise that the trolley that Hugh was sitting in makes when you push it along. Although... <laughs> sort of noise and you hear like the rattle 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 of metal moving and then you guys all see as one of the trolleys that you've been seeing scattered about everywhere here rounds a corner stops seems to look at you three plays <laughs> then just freezes completely still pretends for a couple of seconds like that nope it was always sitting here it was not moving what are you talking about realizes that no no its stealth roll was absolutely atrocious and then <laughs> and just flees back around the corner and it's just gone no fuck? one was pushing it it was on its own he is just staying wide eyed and just like what is that yes, did, this, the jokes... did the three of us see that also sigil yeah. war Sigil just swore, no blinking, no nothing. Sigil just swore. Uh, hey, um, Foster, can I get a dexterity saving throw from you, please? Uh, sure. I'm actually fairly good at dexterity. Oh my goodness. So. <laughs> well, fairly good. I'm I That's a nat 20. Oh, nice. 20. nice. Okay. <laughs> Catting so stings. Can I just add, before anything else, like... Sigil swore, and he was like, what does that mean? This is the first time he heard this word. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. You realize while everyone was distracted with Sigil swearing, gasp! Uh, the, uh, cacao. In front of a child. Exactly. Even if it's a child is 17. <laughs> she has been so thrown off guard, but she just forgot that two were here, and she just like she just swore. <laughs> okay, so mm. as that's going on, um, like you and Cacao, you kind of get a few moments where you're distracted by that, that you don't really notice that very. Very slightly, the trolley that he was sitting in is very millimetre by millimetre, edging away, trying to get to the edge of the group, trying to kind of edge out of Cacao's grasp, and as soon as it thinks it's free, there is this moment of stillness before 
Boom! It tries to make a run for it, but Cacao, you are even faster. Your lightning quick reflexes grab onto the handle of the trolley and the whole thing just bucks upwards at the front as uh, you stop in its tracks. You, you fall onto the ground of the trolley. You are still in the trolley, but you were like, uh, if you were sitting up before, you are now flat and all as you fell over. Uh, and Foster, you are being dragged along as this trolley is trying desperately to run away and your heels are digging in and it just goes skid, skid, skid. You're not getting anywhere fast, but, you've, but you are going somewhere. Oh, goodness, the trolley is trying diff- to kidnap you. Yeah, Kakao is definitely oh, like, even if he has like usually a candy demeanor, he's like, you're not taking you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you jump I, out of this, whatever this is. Shall, shall I roll dexterity to see how well he does at that? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, just to see how well you manage to survive this thing as it's trying to like buck um Kakao off. A twenty-one. A twenty-one. Ooh. Yeah, no, you are managing to cling tight to this cart. In fact, you even managed to get um up onto your feet, so you can be standing up inside the cart now, and rel- and you can be relatively stable there. Yay! Um, <laughs> yeah, I think with everything going on, Hugh's like going to try and like scramble out, P- pick up his two items, because hey, they are not <laughs> fair and square, but. Uh, <laughs> Yes. Hmm, I, it's probably not good if the child gets kidnapped. The child agrees with that. So, You're getting uh, trolley he's mapped. gonna jump on out. <laughs> trolley <laughs> now. Yeah, I think with that dex roll, you can easily jump out of the cart. Foster, like, you are still kind of clinging onto this. However, now that Hugh is out, this this trolley is trying to take off even faster than before. So you are being dragged <laughs> along it now if you don't let go now that Hugh's out. Yeah, no. Now that Hugh's out, he will let go of the cart because, like, that's like his main concern. He's not as much concerned about where the cart is going as to you're not taking this child that I've been growing attached to away from me. <laughs> not on my watch. Yeah. Uh, two oh my. Yeah. So he just like tumble and roll around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Two questions. Uh, one: How far is the cart from Sigil? Uh, Sigil, I reckon it, like, in, in the amount of time, because all of this would have happened really quickly, it's probably, like, 15 feet away, Max. Alright. Uh, second, second question. Can the, can the cart make a wisdom saving throw? Um, no, it cannot, because it's really (laughs) fucking stupid. It just automatically fails. Alright, uh, it takes 2d, uh, 2d10, 2d8 of damage, as, uh, Sigil cast Toll the Dead on it. (laughs) <laughs> astounding yeah okay you i'm not even gonna make you roll for that because i'll tell you what uh the cart just kind of cool can you actually oh, please explain to me like how this damage works can you give me the description of the spell please all right you point at one cre- creature you see within range and the sound of a dolorous bell fills the air around it for a minute the target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take 1d8 necrotic damage. If the target is missing any of its hit, hit points, it, it instead takes 1d12 necrotic damage. And it like increases by one die when I reach level 5, so it's like 2d8 or 2d12. Yeah, okay, in that case, yeah, this, this thing kind of... I can see this going, uh, so it tries to escape. Uh, Cacao grabs on, Hugh stands up, grabs stuff, jumps out, Cacao lets go, the trolley goes, gee, and just tries to rock it off, and then, like, as it just gets to the corner to try and flee around there, Sigil, you point your arm out, and then this trolley just kind of shatters under, I'm guessing, however necrotic damage works against metal, we'll call it metal fatigue. Like, actually, yeah, rust works as well. Yeah, this thing just disintegrates <laughs> into rust and nothing but, like, the little plasticky wheels are left behind as they just roll in little circles and go, the wall, 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 and collapse onto the floor. Are, are you two all right? I, I, yeah, and I'm going to say at this point, Hugh is just, like, whole... If he can, he's just holding on to Cacao and Sigil's hands, if if he can. Yeah. I think it will be Sigil's hand, because the thing is that when Cacao le- lets go of a cart going at full speed, he probably had some momentum and ended up against the wall or something. 
Fair. All perfect. Internal in, internally, Sigil is is relieved that no one is hate, but no one is terrified slash hates her for casting magic. You think thinks it's re the magic is really neat. Like heck yeah, fellow spellcaster. <laughs> Don't worry, you have only gained coolness points in Hugh's mind. <laughs> oh. Sigil is still like. She is still upset about the fact she she, awa she, she awakened trauma, at, like, for Zverk when she cast the fucking uh, firebolt. So she's very, like, on edge about that. Oh. She's like, mm -hmm. oh. like, don't want to upset more people. Yeah, no, Hugh isn't bored at all. And, like, at this point, I think he's just kind of... Clinging to his two friends because wow, he was almost kidnapped. That's not good. <laughs> no. Well, I say we so... don't we don't mess with the cards anymore. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. All of those. Are you okay, Kakao? Yeah. After... Yeah. Don't worry about me. Let's more focus on that you because like oh god, that was scary. But yeah. no, I would. I would. I mean, I doubt I could, but I would love to have a word with those cards, because something's fishy around here. I agree. There. If those cards are alive, I wonder what else is. Going to I mean... look down at his glass statue. Sadly, <laughs> it's so cool. But what, what if it's not okay? And now he's just very conflicted and looking at it. So she's looking at her coat, cause it's, and, and cause it's like, uh, she's like wearing it and like, <laughs> her, so she's just like, take it and off her like, like, but it, she's like carrying it in her like hand still. So like, hmm. If if anything tries to like, if the coat tries to jump at her, she will chuck it. I love how prepared you guys all are to give away the wonderful little gifts that you've gotten from the rest of this, just because they maybe maybe might try to eat you. Maybe. <laughs> you doesn't want to give them up, but like, man, for now she's not going them to up keep yet. His like, for, for now, Hugh is keeping these items. Though, like, he would be really saddened if, yeah, they tried to up and kill them. Hopefully not. Yeah. Sigil isn't taking any drastic measures yet. Yet. Yet being the key word, huh? <laughs> All right. So, uh... As Kakao goes back on his feet, is there any other cart in whatever part of the mall they ended up? Uh, you're currently on the second floor. The walkway is around like 10 feet across uh, and then just looks down onto the lower floor. From where you guys are, you can't see any more carts. Mm -hmm. Like the carts that we saw before, do we... Did they go, or are they still there? Uh, the one that rounded the corner and then ran away, uh, they're gone. The the one that you exploded is gone. You can, <laughs> uh, as you guys are kind of looking down onto the lower floor, you're fairly sure there were some carts down there. But you know that at least one of them you kicked out of the lift before you uh got in it. Um, they're not there anymore. The the lower <laughs> floor seems to be empty of trolleys. Oh, that's Creepy. funny. That's okay. I bet that they would know where the exit is. I wonder. Still, I guess we'll just need to find out and try and stick close to each other. Yes, agreed. Never trust empty hab habited spaces. Yes, yet again proven correct. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just going to casually traumatize Cacao when it comes to uh, abandoned places. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, this is, this is his, this is definitely character right now. 
Oh my goodness, I'm just realizing he was almost kidnapped again. He's like, he's not, he's not bothered by it. He's not being to do... Yeah. Technically, third, if we consider his backstory. Uh, anyway. Um, anyway. Uh, he is... <laughs> Hugh isn't particularly worried about that part, in all honesty, but I'm sure the two adults are. Anyway, Hugh's sticking close to uh, Sigil and Cacao. A wise man. Yeah, this is definitely one hand holding Hugh, one hand hold, holding Cacao. She's not letting go. She's she's very much, hmm, sus. She's on yeah. high alert. <laughs> Yeah, like from like, what do you guys want to do from here? Because like, you can't see any more carts from where you are, but also you know there are more about. Um, yeah, it's up to you guys what you want uh, to do. Yeah, I'm going. What if we? So this whole thing started with a cart coming out from down there, and he's going to point in the direction where the first cart came from. So. I bet that this is the most likely place to find some answers. I agree. Uh -huh. Let's try and find out what's going on. All right. Uh, you head down the walkway and you turn the corner and like it's this whole place even though like it already seemed eerily empty now that like you kind of had a while to get used to the trolleys being everywhere and they've gone it seems even even more eerily, eerie than it did before. Oh. Wow, I'm getting tangled up with words at the moment. Um, <laughs> is you just kind of, there's this pure silence. Every so often you think you can kind of catch like the sounds echoing around the place of like the slight rattle of metal or the squeak of a wheel, but you do not see anything as far as you, like, as far as you can tell currently. Can like you try rolling investigation to see if he can find a nearby one or uh, try and figure out the direction they should go in to yeah. find the closest one? Absolutely, please do. I'm gonna also r roll perception. That's a 10. That's what? a 22. At least we have a brain cell. Oh, that's a great <laughs> job of <laughs> and a five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm only going to address that uh, 22 because I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Hugh, Check how he's shaken. Hugh, yeah, you're looking around Bell. and it's really difficult to track the noises because, again, this place is so hard. Like, this place is made out of such hard materials that everything echoes. So it's really difficult to trace where stuff's coming from. However, like, you lean down close and have a look at the ground and you notice some very slight scratches in the marble flooring. And they kind of look like scratches that maybe trolley wheels would make if it cornered really tightly here and went down that sort of area. And, oh, there's a couple of little uh, smears on the floor. Again, yeah, wheel marks there. You reckon you could probably track where that first escaping trolley went? He's going to, like, step forward and start following those tracks. He's focused on this now. Sigil's walking after him. Yeah, Kakao follows closely. Like, he does not... Like, he will stay within arm reach of this child now. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Same here for, for Sigil. She's not going... She's not going anyway, anywhere away from these two. <laughs> All right. As you keep tracking this trolley and you keep walking for several minutes, you notice that the, that the sounds of trolleys moving about are starting to get louder and louder. And eventually you come across this one that is just sitting there in the middle of an empty walk, an otherwise empty walkway. And it's just kind of like rattle, 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 like almost like it's shivering and the metal is clanking against each other as it does so. As it spots you, it just makes a few moments of rattle, rattle, and then like it lunges forward a few feet and then ducks back, so it's standing back where it was before, almost like it's trying to warn you off. My goodness. Ooh. Well, it looks I... like we have a new friend. W would you be willing to talk this out so we can figure out what's going on and like he's addressing the trolley and like waving with his hand a bit? 
Can you roll me animal handling? I know this thing is technical. Yeah, it's not technically an animal, but I think that's as close as you're going to get, really. Yeah. Can I also yeah. roll animal handling? Yeah, sure thing. Let's see how badly this goes. It's a 16. A 16. 11 a from Sigil. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Sigil, you kind of take a step forward and, like, the shiver rattling seems to get louder. So, uh, sadly, it doesn't seem to like you very much considering you're the one that just obliterated one of its pals. However, um, Hugh, it doesn't seem to make any more, like, aggressive moves when you step closer to it. It doesn't seem to want to attack you just yet, um, but it's certainly not calming down. Sigil's so definitely keeping an eye out in, if, in case that, that cart is... Hey, can I roll intimidation? Yeah, if you want to. Because... Oh my goodness. 19. That's a 19. Okay, I, you oh. are going to have to tell me what a 19 in intimidation means. What are you doing to intimidate the trolley? So, while, uh, while Hugh is trying to approach the trolley, uh, Sigil is just standing behind and she is staring at, at at the trolley and she is gripping at the 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 her cane thing or like the street sign cane and like she looks ready to to like cast a spell if anything if like basically uh, she's saying to the cart if you do anything suspicious i will obliterate you <laughs> Oh, that's astounding. That's amazing. Okay. Um, right, so what happens with that then? Um, can I get a, a dexterity saving throw from you, Hugh? My goodness. Oh, no. <laughs> this... Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my goodness. A 17. A 17. Okay, that's not bad. That's pretty good. All right, what happens is <laughs> this trolley certainly wasn't calming down before, but again, wasn't being aggressive. And then Sigil had to try and intimidate it. And any sort of calming down that it may have potentially been about to do is completely undone because mm. the moment you get close enough to maybe reach out a hand, Hugh, this trolley lunges forward again. And you get, with that 17, you get just this moment to dive out of this way as this thing kind of trolleys over your leg. And you're going to take, like, uh, one damage, but, like, that's nothing you get one damage as this thing crashes over your leg rolls over you turns around and then vanishes around a corner again Hugh you have kind of like you are knocked to the ground you get a moment to stand up again as this thing's left a rather nasty bruise across your shin which is not very much fun and you kind of get all of you get this one moment of just what the hell was that and then, you know, all the little rattling and squeaky wheel noises that you were hearing everywhere earlier that kind of felt like they were surrounding you. Well, they're not really surrounding you anymore. They were all kind of coming from down that corridor that that one trolley just vanished down as it turns around again and comes out from behind the corner once more and starts barreling towards you guys. And barely a few meters behind is waves upon waves upon waves of trolleys rattling, crushing towards you. And you guys might want to run. <laughs> oh my goodness. Running is this a, now. Is this another deck save? <laughs> no. no, that, no. I think Kakao is going to just grab you and, ju and Sigil and just dash just dash away <laughs> yeah no you do not need to make to any rolls it. but yeah these things are just barreling towards you guys they're almost tripping over each other in that like as they're trying to charge forwards running after that one leading trolley that you scared before and they're just coming towards you <laughs> what do you guys want to do where do you want to go <laughs> um i can I say one of what to do in case stuff goes bad but like i'm not doing it yet yep <laughs> can i just say i have the image that like cacao has just straight up picked up hugh like he was under one of his arms oh yeah 
yeah, this, is called, this is like this is over another <laughs> amazing <laughs> All right, yeah, as you guys are going in these things to chase fast, you are running down corridors left and right, just trying to get the hell out of there. Uh, oh, have, can you still hear me? Discord seems to have frozen. Heck. Ah! I think my help... Oh, I can hear you. Uh, okay, yeah. You. yeah no, oh, hello, good. You. Okay, sorry, oh, crashed for a bit there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so, yeah, these things are just correct. Like, you are running down corridors left and right as these trolleys come crashing behind you, making, a, like, a massive clamorous sound uh, that is, like, almost as loud as, you know, a fucking tidal wave as they come towards you. Um, you guys manage to cut, get to one of those weird moving staircases and you like slide down the edge of it as these trolleys start to literally crash over each other, also trying to get down the stairs following after you. And you get this absolute moment of thinking that this wave of trolleys is about to like crush you entirely when bong, 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 everything freezes. <laughs> And I have to ask, have all three of you already listened to the announcement? I, have. I know I have. Okay, that's yeses from everyone then? Wait, what? I didn't hear the, the question. Uh, have you listened to the announcement, the, the engineer's announcement? Um, it's played in yeah. a lot of other games. <laughs> yeah. Okay, in that case, I don't have to play it in this one. <laughs> Mod, you thankfully managed to avoid yet listening to it yet again. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that announcement plays. You hear someone call it, like saying that, "Hey, you're on a train. There is an exit in the roof of each carriage, and you guys can if you there's something going on, and the person running the train doesn't know what they're doing." Uh, while this is going on, do you guys move at all? Because while everything in, like, everything that it belongs to the carriage will have frozen, you guys can still move during that. Yeah, I think that, like, Kekau is not even thinking twice about, uh, if, like, things are moving or not. He's just going. <laughs> no, valid He is currently being held by Kekau, so he's... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, Sigil is also being held, but she is thinking. Oh. Because if there is a hatch at the ceiling, hmm. All right. And they case, need to get to the top floor, huh? In that case, you guys get like about a three minutes head start on the trolleys as they stay frozen while this announcement goes. And you can manage, while this is all playing, it comes through clearly like it's um like coming out of the carriage itself on the walls all around you. And mm. then as it kind of draws to a close, like if you do exit the chain, please mind the gap. Bong, bong, bong. And in the distance, you can hear the like, crashing of metal as that wave of trolleys smashes against the ground floor. And while it definitely sounds like a lot of them got pretty badly damaged from that, there's still plenty of squeaking wheels that you can hear in the distance uh, that seem to be trying to hunt you down. For now, though, you have managed to uh, hide somewhere and they can't haven't found you just yet. So, Sigil has a certain item, and currently, knowing that she can, that they can escape the train without having to go through the door, she's pretty happy. Hey, fa hey, Cacao, how, how, what do you how do you think how do you feel about flying? Flying? Uh, <laughs> no offense, but I don't think that any of us seems fit to fly. She is, but she she does warn like him before. He's like, "All right, well, I I guess we now know our exit." And that she and you know and her like the her like big horn thing ha has like a ring on it. That's like a ring with a hold up. I'll what color is it? I forgot. I keep forgetting what. Which one is the one associated with happiness? Uh, I don't know if you've got one of the bad, but as with mood rings, you've got to have the sheet somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I do. I'm, yeah, it's yellow. So it turned yellow, and she and she taps his cacao's uh, like shoulder, and cacao, you can fly now. 
congrats. <laughs> Do you yeah, look fun. excited at all of this? Like, okay, wow, a lot's happening here, but... Okay, uh, uh, the way I'm picturing this do. is that, yeah, uh, Kakao has no idea of what you're just saying, and then he starts, like, somehow levitating with against his own will because he doesn't understand what's going on <laughs> for, like, a few moments before getting back on the ground. And she just kind of explains to him that, like, you can, he, he now has a spell fly casted on him, and that he can fly to the, to, to the, to the, to the ceiling. We right, just need so... to find the latch, and yes. I guess get it open. Mm hmm Yeah, finding the center of the carriage is going to be quite... We have to figure out where the center of wherever this is is. Maybe like the top floor, but above where we entered. I mean, there were four hallways, so might as well. Uh, you mm. guys, I will say, considering the amount of frantic running about you've done, you, there's no way you are going to be able to find the door you originally yeah. entered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, but yeah, you can. So should we? Yeah, you can get up to the ceiling at least. And uh, Kakao, if you kind of poke at the ceiling, you can uh, find that it seems to be made. The, the, like the marble that is the ceiling doesn't seem to be s completely solid because you can kind of see seams that maybe like the edges of something you could pry open. Mm hmm. The thing is that okay, so Kakao is going to. F fly to this he, what he's going to do is just to put uh to let sigil go on the ground because like he still wants to get a hold of you because holy hell there is a bunch of cart after us but also he can't look for sim with his two both of his hands being here holding people i mean hugh so. i mean hugh could actually just like do the searching for him he's well just being held after all fair <laughs> So it will have magic missile if if uh, if needed. <laughs> like force damage, always helpful. <laughs> yeah. You also but... has magic missile, so cool. <laughs> okay, so yeah, in this case, I guess that yeah, he's just going to fly up with everyone and just like awkwardly. Uh... I do have to ask, uh, yeah. just like, can fly actually support the weight of other people as well? Yeah. Because uh, I don't think it can. I think it's just the user. Um, like, like, I, it's been played as like, because I I know uh, with in like I, which game was it? I think it was in Trouble in the Wings. Primrose like picked up both March and uh, Marcel. Yeah. Um, and, like, uh, so I want to like at high levels. Um, I think it's... like. Yeah, it doesn't actually necessarily say um, like how much it can carry. I think you're actually gonna make have to make a stealth, uh, sorry, a strength roll, um, cacao, because oh. uh, you, you if you are carrying the weight of two people, you are having to carry the mm -hmm. full weight of these people as well. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I have a plus one. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Be fair, you still have the best strength out of okay. all of us. Nice. All right, with a 17, I will say you can carry one person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, in this case, uh, if he has to choose, depend because like he's going to try to like slowly fly up, trying with the two, doesn't work out, so he, now he has to make a choice, and he just is going to turn and like... Sigil, can you handle if something happens and I have to just let you defend for yourself for just a bit? Of course. Okay, and in this case, he's just going to fly up with you and l hold you above him, trying to figure out if there are seams in the, in the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can find the seams. Uh, they seem very solid, though. Like, it's going to take some work to try and pry them apart. Should I roll something to like see how well Hugh does with that? Um, 
it depends how you're trying to pry them. What are, what are you using to do so? I guess you would first try and see, is there like some, is there a specific way to opening them? Like, do they need to be ch turned in a certain way? Or like, is there a way to just get it a bit more open and then make it easier? Mm, like, as you're kind of like poking at them, each of these things are like a full, uh, they, you have a closer look and you find that like each of these things tend to be about like a 10 foot square. So like, they're pretty massive. And as far as you can tell, they, they're not meant to be coming apart. They're not meant to open or anything. It's like, I, like, they're not meant to be, well, we'll be trying to open them anyway, but, uh, mm. I don't think a strength roll will end very well for Hugh, because he has a very lovely plus zero to strength. <laughs> <laughs> the no strength squad. Yep. <laughs> yep. We got plus one, plus zero, and minus one. This is why yeah. you gotta find other ways than just brute forcing. Yeah. Which is why, which is why Sigil has fireball. Uh, yep. Yeah, also, <laughs> all right. I will say, uh, Hugh, you do still have your inspiration point that you can use if you want. Uh, you cut out on me there. What did you say? Yeah. You do still have your inspiration point to use if you want. Ah, yes, the inspiration. <laughs> Call in mm, I'm thinking, like, can 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 Hugh roll investigation to see if he fi can figure out a way to open it using like dexterity or something instead um, of strength? I don't think you need to roll in. Like, you wouldn't need to roll investigation because, like, I've given you all the information um, that you can here that you can get here. Of this is how big they are. They are very close together. They're not meant to open. Um, I reckon that like, you have to be the one to come up with what method you want to use here. Right. Can you use Firebolt to try and, like, blast the way open? If you want to try, yeah, give me a spellcasting uh... roll. Cool, that's a d20 plus 6 then. A 15. A 15, yeah. Okay, so this is a pretty strong fireball. Do you give Kakao a heads up that this is what you're doing, or do you just launch it? <laughs> yeah, he, he would just warn him, like, just fair warning, I'm going to try and light this thing on fire to see if it can open up. <laughs> yeah, because I was about to say, like, Kakao is, when when he was going to bring up, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to, uh, to pry it open with fire, like, you have... The pupil going like very very small like oh what are you even doing but then again what other option do we have so he's just going to using his flying power i guess <laughs> lower himself <laughs> at a reasonably safe distance from the ceiling so that you know you don't get a point blank fireball in the face <laughs> To be fair, Kakao, you wouldn't have to worry. I'm I'm not sure if uh, sculpt spells works on uh, cantrips, but like, still, it's it's a good idea to like be safe anyway. But yeah, yeah, yeah. you you lob this fireball at the ceiling, and can you please roll damage for me as well? That's a two d ten. Right. Yep, yeah. that is a two d ten. Let's see how much. Okay, nine damage isn't too bad. All right. With that, I think, yeah, you launch this up against the um, ceiling and everything. And it kind of, you can see it heat up and kind of glow in the way that metal does when metal gets heated up. Considering that this ceiling is supposedly made of marble, that's a little bit odd. Uh, you can kind of see, like, the seam kind of vanishes a little bit as uh, as it heats up and the metal has, and the actual metal marble ceiling expands um, and, like, closes any even tighter scatter seam. But then bit by bit, as it boink, 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 cools down again, the seam is a little bit wider. Like, can he try rolling strength, I guess, to see how it goes? Yeah, if you want to have a go at it. 
yeah, grow my strength. That's a straight D20. Wow, that's a 15. 15. Okay, with that, I reckon, yeah, <laughs> once it's cooled down enough for you to stick your fingers in there, you can, like, using all your strength, you can pry it open a couple of inches. <laughs> Again, these things are huge, and they are heavy, and they do not want to come apart. He's just trying his best here. Yeah. A couple of centimeters is better than nothing, though. Can he try st like sticking his quarter staff to help open it up? Yeah, if you want to. <laughs> um, Would I even roll for that? Give me another strength roll this time with advantage. Advantage, uh, all right. That's a 12. That's ah. an eight. eight. Okay, with that 12, even with the help of your quarter staff, you only managed to open it up like another couple of centimeters. So let's say like it's open, it, it, it's open or maybe around six inches now. So like you've got a gap, you could probably stick your arm down there. It's definitely not enough for any of you three to go crawling through though. This is like the toughest, it's like the toughest puzzle we got yet, how to open <laughs> yeah. the latch. I'm also, like, the other thing is, at this point in time, uh, the ten minutes of fly is starting to wear off, and Cacao, you're having a hard time staying aloft. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Quick question. <laughs> yeah. Quick question. Can you try casting Misty Step to, like... Get on top of the latch and then just kind of try to jump on it to force it down. Uh, can you can you read me out the description of that spell, please? Misty step. So you're briefly surrounded by silvery mist, and you teleport up to thirty feet to an unoccupied space that you can see. Sadly, not because you can't see where it is. The plate, like, there's too much stuff in the way, so you couldn't see. If you had some other sort of spell that allowed you to go to places like that you can't directly see, then I would allow it. Um, but well, basically, you look through the gap. Most of what you can just see is solid gears and chunks of metal. Man, yeah, my only other teleport spell is Thunder Step, but. It's an occupied space you can see. Yeah, sorry. Otherwise it would okay, have been well, a really well, good idea. Yeah, <laughs> while a lot of this is happening, so yeah, like Kakao start to feel like, oh no, I'm slowly falling down now, I'm not remaining at a constant height, and so he's just being like, uh, Hugh, do you have any last resort option? Because I don't think we have much time left, really. Hmm. Let me check out one more spell. I will say at this point, I, Sigil, like, check, I just want to check back in with Sigil on the ground floor. How are you doing? Uh, she's definitely <laughs> wary. She's, like, looking out in case the, the, the herd of the shopping carts, like, start, like, finding them. Yeah, and you, you can also, like you can definitely hear the carts moving about. You can hear them closing in on you bit by bit. <laughs> yeah, Dear. she she's ready to like cast a spell if for like the like a she she can either cast like spells on the uh, on like the shopping carts themselves if they like come too close, mm -hmm. but also like if. If like if you slash cacao say anything of like how the that like it's not opening, she can cast magic missile and like try and hit it from over it from where she is. Yeah. Uh, I have a question though. Uh, just like general question. How far is the ceiling from the floor? Okay, they're pretty high ceilings, so that's cool enough. If it is mm -hmm. um. Call it like thirty feet. Call it thirty feet. Okay. okay. All right. So it's in range for it's in range for magic missile. To be fair, magic missile has a ridiculous range. Even if like I made it <laughs> twice as tall, magic missile would still be good. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm I'm also looking at what I have. Like Hugh has pressed digitation, and he has find familiar, which he could potentially use here. So uh, for now, since this this is like the last moment, um, can Hugh try casting pre prestigitation to like? So the panel was suddenly hot earlier. Can he try to just cool it down to make it just shrink even more? <sighs> I love the idea. Way. I will say that you are you are on an auto track that would work. Prestidigitation as a spell is not powerful enough to be able to have like a big mm. um effect on a chunk of metal this fucking massive. But yeah, fair. Like, okay, wait, wait, let's see what Hugh does not really have any icy spells. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I was like, again, if you had some of those, I would say, like, they could do something, but no. I think, yeah, at this point, you're probably about to cast it, and then Cacao, you can feel yourself slowly, like, falling back down to the ground. You're not falling, falling yet, but... Mm. Yeah, but he's just like, sorry, kid, but time's up, and just, like, going to go down with what little power he, power he has left before he just come crashing down. <laughs> yeah, like, you, yeah. you kind of crashed the last couple of feet and uh, have a bit of a rough landing, but no one's injured, you're all good. So, Sigil's gonna cast Shatter on there. Nice. Now, uh, do remind me, you can cast Shatter at, like, a point that wherever you like, right? It's not centered. Yeah, at a, at, a, at yeah. a point, at a ten-foot radius sphere, uh, make a con saving throw, and um, she's gonna cast it. Hmm? Yeah, I'll tell you. Uh, make me, make me, uh, like, an um, make me a spell casting roll and roll damage as well. Um, and I can tell you exactly what how well this goes. But I will say it will go well. That's, that's a really good idea. Hugh also has the spell. All right, so that's uh, 3d8, but I am casting it at level 3, so it's a 4d8. Nice. And a 21 on the spellcasting roll. Nice. With that, and that's technically actually 26 damage because this is metal and Shatter works fantastic against metal. So as, as you cast this, the sound just, like, it's Shatter. And not only does the echo, the sound of the spell itself go everywhere, but the metal plates that make up the ceiling of this, uh, like of them all, also shatter. And you guys get this wonderful <laughs> moment of seeing the inner workings as these as the magic, uh, the illusions that are built into the plates that are holding up the ceiling fail, and they just fade to straight like dark metal. And you guys get shots of like the gears and arms and the inner workings of this as they tumble down to the ground and crash, 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 all over the floor in front of you guys. Can I actually get quick dexterity saving throws to make sure that it doesn't hit any of you three? Oh boy. My goodness. Oh, I actually have some... Okay. Because it's dexterity. always fun when giant That's shards of metal come raining down. That's a net one. Oh, oh boy. Oh no. Oh, boy. oh no. <laughs> you, okay. Oh no. You. Oh my goodness. Okay. Can we say Cacao is still holding you? So no, uh, I don't. No. no, you we you probably would have dropped you when you fell to the ground. I was like, that's and for Cacao, that's a good enough, definitely a good enough roll that you get away safe. It's not good enough that I that you can save someone else as well. Yeah. Um, I will say, Hugh, again, you still have that inspiration point. <laughs> be fine hopefully okay. in that case <laughs> with that six sigil and that crit fail hue both of you are going to be taking some damage as metal rains down from the ceiling uh sigil you you only get hit a little bit because you do manage to avoid the absolute worst of it um but as it grinds down like it can crush you or cut you and some shards slice across your shoulder and you take three slashing damage as these uh as it rains down. Um That's not too bad. Yeah. I Hugh, from you. Yeah. Hugh, however, um as you are actually 
you're going to be taking double damage here, basically. Um, oh, man. Yeah, Alec, you are almost crushed as a giant chunk of metal falls down and slams into the ground beneath you. And you're only going to take five damage, thankfully, because I rolled quite low there. Um, yeah. But what also happens as this chunk falls right next to you is not only have you just destroyed the ceiling, you've also destroyed the floor where the metal has just kind of fallen into. And you get this shot as the plates that make up the floor also start coming apart. And Hugh, your coat gets caught in the gap of this as some of the gears that make up like the underworkings of this carriage grabs the fabric and starts churning and churning and churning. And you know what also happens? You guys just made a really loud noise. The trolley's nowhere to find you now. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. Oh, oh my fuck. goodness. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Kekau, like, probably, like, just da- managed to, like, dash away and scramble and get out of the way. But, like, as he sees all of this happen, like, he, like, his face is just, like, you can see in his eyes, he's just mortified because, like, oh, no, this went from bad to worst. <laughs> And, uh, okay, priority one, Kakao just leaps for Hugh, because no, <laughs> save the child. <laughs> like, Hugh's officially trapped now, oh joy. Mm-hmm. Always fun. Hmm, is, can I cast, can I cast, uh, hmm, what, can I cast Chill Touch at the... At the thing that that's trying, but at the thing that's grabbing uh, Hugh's coat. Yeah, like if you the, want to. Yep, yeah, and I will say uh, that's uh, necromat. Uh, like that, that's um, necromancy. Necrotic damage. Yeah, necrotic damage. That was that was the word that was trying. Twenty one. Okay. Uh, in that case, yeah. Her, her flame hand thing turns blue, and she just slashes at the at the gears, and they. Well, I haven't rolled damage yet, so yeah. what's the damage? Uh, that's 2d8. 2d8, that's not bad. Uh, 12. That- yep. Yeah. I will say with that, yeah, as like as your hand rakes past, this, the gear starts getting rustier and rustier. Um, and it's enough that like with a tug, you can pull um, Hugh's cloak free. Alright. He's... Hugh is going to do that then, and uh, he's gonna thank uh, Kakao and uh, Sigil both. Okay, good news is you're free. Bad news, the trolleys are clo- getting a lot closer. The trolleys have rounded the corner. The trolleys can now see you, and that massive wave of them is coming at you again. Hey, quick question: Are they all like coming from one place? No, they're coming. I reckon they're coming from you at about like two angles. So you've got one of the like from either side of the hallway that you guys are standing in the middle of, um, and like right above you is the gaping hole in the ceiling. Oh, that's bad. Um, okay. Let's uh, a quick question for uh, Eustaria: Does Sigil have Thunderstep? She does not dang i had the idea that uh so he does have thunder step and it could allow him and one other person to like get teleported up to the ceiling how many but... use, how many spell slots do you have left uh Hugh has two uh level three spell slots so it is possible that you can like cast it once get one person up there jump down, try not to die, cast it again and get the other person up there. <laughs> yeah, uh, <does> everyone... Okay. <laughs> like, does anyone have any other ideas? Because if not, well, uh, I'm... <laughs> okay. okay, so the thing is, so, like, in, uh, in a few seconds, Kakao, so the ceiling fall through on his friends, and then Hugh getting almost crushed by gears, and also there are carts rushing by from the side, and for... And so what's going to happen is that for some reason that he does not know, even he, so you know how, like... You know, Kakao, he's like 
five foot tall toon looking, you know, roughly like this. Well, the thing is that with all of these intense things happening, you get like some surge of magic that somehow surrounds him. And when both of you open your eyes again, suddenly you're met with this. And I'm going oh. to say that Kakao has used for the first time turn smite. So he is now a big, a big old cat. <laughs> oh my goodness. Amazing. I love it. Oh my god, it's so cute. Shame. Oh my goodness. Amazing. <laughs> And the so for reference, it says that the characters goes from uh, basically goes to large size, which is between eight and twelve feet, so like ten. So so like he's now about ten-ish feet or so. That's fair enough. That's big enough that you could probably pick your friends up and just throw them up there. <laughs> Yeah, that's like, he doesn't, like, again, he's he doesn't understand, he's very confused because that's never happened to him. How can he even do that? But, you know, the trolleys are coming and his friends are just almost died, so he's just going to take them and throw them at the ceiling. <laughs> Alright, can I get both a dexterity and a strength roll from you to see how, like, your aim is and how powerful the throw was? Uh, okay, well, dex uh, so I, let me check. Cause... I want to succeed, so I will make this very easy yeah. for you. But <laughs> dexterity, I have a plus three, and strength I need to check because uh, no 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 no. That was a six for the dexterity. I know it's and enemy. I have advantage for strength check because I'm large. Oh god, come on! <laughs> please, please, come on! Do I have advantage? Come on! I mean... Hugh, Hugh at least is still good. Okay, good. Okay, so the strength roll is plenty powerful enough. <laughs> Considering that was a nat 20, 20, the strength is easily powerful enough for you guys to get there. However, the aim with a 6 it's was off. pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. So again, I think or, rather than uh, managing or... to throw you at the right angle for you guys to land safely on like a solid bit of, uh, like a solid bit up there, um, you guys c can manage to kind of splat into the ceiling right next to an edge. So, uh, Hugh and, uh, Sigil, you guys, like, you're clinging to the edge of this, of, of, like, the scaffolding as you are up there. You've got, like, a pretty good hold, but you're gonna have to give me strength rolls for you guys to, like, pull yourselves up. Oh, boy, strength. Okay, then. <laughs> yeah, oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy, strength. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright, that's a six. Uh, Alright. <laughs> with a 16, Hugh, you managed to pull yourself up. Uh, Sigil, with a six, you don't. Oh, you are still that hanging is... there. You don't fall, um, but uh, yeah, you're stuck there for a bit longer. Can, can you try, try and help? Uh, sorry, Staria, can you repeat that? Can I try roll acrobatics? Uh, yeah, sure, if you want. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, like, can Hugh try and help pull her up? I, th I think with that 20 for oh, acrobatics, wow. yeah. So, I've, the way I kind of picture that is, you try just pulling yourself up with brute strength, it doesn't work because you do not have amazing arm muscles. But with that 20 with acrobatics, you kind of start swinging your legs back and forth, and you do this amazing, like, acrobatic backflip up and around and ta-da well done you're back up next to you and you two are now safe inside like the inner workings of like of this carriage near the ceiling as you look up you can see like a secondary ceiling above you um but right now uh cacao you are big trolleys are swarming <laughs> your feet uh what do uh, <laughs> you know cacao hasn't planned all any of this let alone getting big so um hmm, good excellent question uh would it be reasonable for him to like is there um any other uh any other floor nearby that he could like try to like climb up to yeah you can climb up to the second floor if you want um yes. that will get you like an extra 15 feet in the air yes and that's definitely what he is going to do. <laughs> okay, you wade through this wave of trolleys as they butt against your ankles. 
<laughs> and you climb up to the second floor and from there I reckon if you reach up and you jump and make enough of a strength check that you can pull yourself up, you can just get up there. Though there's not going to be much room for you when you're this big. <laughs> I think that he's just going to... Again, like, advantage because John Smite, which, thank God. Yeah. yeah. Uh. If, if there... Oh, thank God. A 19. <laughs> oh, good. thank fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that <laughs> we take that oh. yeah, yeah, I think that he's definitely not going to try to like squeeze all of him at once up there. No, yeah. <laughs> so I'm guessing like you start shrinking back down as you climb into this small space. Yeah, because uh, w what I'll say is that that's the first time it happened to him. He has no control over this, so it doesn't last for long. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Cow. You're being hugged. You are yes. being He's hugged. extremely confused. Just, yeah, it's like Cacao climbs on and just you have one small toon hugging you and then one toon that's taller than you also hugging you. Yeah, it's like she's very relieved that they're all alive and not dead and not crushed to death or mauled to death or whatever was going to happen if the, those trolleys were to get them and thank you yeah hugh is super relieved as well he's just he's so glad his his like his new friends are okay he's just holding on to both of them very tightly uh and the good news is like the trolleys definitely can't get you up, up there but you can kind of when you look down you can see all the trolleys clustered around like the wreckage at the bottom some of them have gotten caught in the cracks that are forming in the floor from where uh stuff had broken those plates uh you can kind of bit by bit see these trolleys trying to swarm beneath you to try and climb up but they're not doing a very good job of it and it keeps kind of <laughs> collapsing underneath as bit by bit oh. this carriage is being ripped apart beneath you guys just so you know uh, oh, well then but so, you're safe so sigils def definitely breathe a sigh of relief and since the the thing above them isn't like open yet she's gonna use a chill touch again to try and open up Wherever, cause, wait, do we see the hatch? Or... Uh, you're gonna have to roll me perception for that. Alright. Shall we all roll perception to see yeah, how well we do? 12. 12? Yeah. 16. Right. 16 from here. I think with that 16, Hugh, you're the one that, like, as you're looking around, you, you're you the one that spots the hatch as you kind of peer around some of the inner workings of this. It's a bit hard to see at any long distance just because there's so much stuff going on here. But uh, as you look, um, a piece of metal kind of shifts out of the way as it's uh, the gears and everything keep moving. And yeah, you spot something that appears to be a wheel attached to the ceiling, and that looks like it's probably the hatch. Then he's going to point that out and like uh, hold onto sigils and cacao's hands and kind of tug them over. Yeah, it's a bit of an odd walk because you have to keep crouching under and like hopping over all these strange moving parts. Uh, but it only takes about two minutes walk, and then you guys can actually get to the hatch, and you're right underneath it now. Alright, uh, since none of us have good strength, Sigil just going to, uh, use Shoal Touch again, so that's another... Plus seven, yeah. that's an eleven. Yeah. Come on, Sigil. I'm gonna say, like, I think what you've probably just done there has made it worse for yourself. Because, <laughs> like, it started to rust, but it's not rusted enough that it, um, anything will move out of the way. It's kind of just rusted stuck now. <laughs> oh, no. She's gonna do it again. Actually, no, she's, now she's gonna, since it's taken damage, she's gonna toll the dead, so... Does that, that, that even work it. against like non-animate or like inanimate objects? Uh, how? Well, oh, it says one creature. Never mind. Yeah, sorry. Mm. Like the troll is mm. counted as creatures. A hatch sadly doesn't. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I can do. I can do firebolt. <laughs> Let me so I burn it. <laughs> I mean, unless anyone else has something better to do. Okay, I think what happened is as you guys are preparing to just like you're we really up to cast Firebolt when you can kind of hear some footsteps or metal above you guys and you go like, oh, got another hatch here guys, come on, better check it. Um, and then you hear like the creaking of metal as they're trying to open it's like, oh god, this one's a difficult one. Can I get another hand here? And <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> and this repeats a couple of times, but you guys can hear kind of chattering above you. And you're like, oh god, this one's really stuck. Do we want to just give up on it? Do you guys want to say anything? Keiko is oh, different. Going to like knock on the ceiling. Hey, could we please get some help here? Oh, we've got some passengers. Like Miss Tatters, we've got some passengers. Come on, we better help. And eventually, there's gonna be enough people there uh, that like I'm not even gonna fucking roll for it. It just happens. These people manage to haul the hatch open and like you don't even get to see their faces because as moment it's open you've got hands reaching down through the hatch and reaching to help pull you guys up and onto the roof of the train as you guys are welcomed into this massive crowd of dozens and dozens of people that are walking along the top of this train. <laughs> and well okay, done, uh... you're out. <laughs> Yay! Can you get a roll perception? Yep. Go ahead. Oh yeah, I will too. And so uh, will you. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Gecko is just like completely out. No. He just. A seven. Oh my goodness. There's so, there's, I will say, there's a lot of stuff going around, uh, going on around you. It's entirely fine to just not notice anything, especially with that crit fail account. So, uh, is either Zverk or Tammy there? Ooh, you will see Tammy, I'm fairly certain. I'm going to just quickly double check my notes because I don't have all the passages memorized. <laughs> but I'm, I'm pretty sure yeah, it is you, on the... Yeah, you, you, so... you can, looking around enough, like, you will probably, uh, I don't think you'll see them at first, but I reckon you might hear, um, Tammy calling out, maybe? Uh, Liz, are you still listening? No, Liz has gone off, never mind, I can't even ask the peanut gallery, but yeah. <laughs> It's gonna take you a little bit of searching because, again, there's a lot of people, but soon enough, if you guys pass out your names, they'll start calling around and your names get passed out to see if anyone recognizes them. And if you've got people that you wanted to see and they are outside the train, you will find them soon enough. So Zverk and Tammy All are right. there. Because... Okay, so Sigil is not letting go of either Cacao or uh, Hugh, but she is still searching for them because she like they were the t the two that like she started out with, and she doesn't she, she wants to know if they're safe. Oh, and you do, and they are they are safe, and I'm sure they are happy to be reunited with you. So yay. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna say Hugh on his end is then just still playing to cacao and sigil, but uh, he like asked to see whether Eos and Zelda are around, cause uh, hey, they're his friends too. Yeah, sadly they are not. You can't see them anywhere just yet. Um, like this, like they, they will actually say this is not all the passengers yet. You get told that like this is maybe. Half the passengers on the train, maybe nearing two thirds, but there's still plenty of people unaccounted for yet. So sorry. Oh well, like he he's well he's saddened by that, but okay, that just means they're still out there, and for now he's happy to just stick with cacao and sigil. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think like uh, Cacao. Did you have anyone you desperately wanted to try and find, or? Well, I mean, with <laughs> with a nut one. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, that's but, fair. I mean, yeah, no, I mean, like the thing is that he he would in other conditions he would definitely be looking for both Baba and Colin, obviously. But like right now, even though he's usually drawn with like very clean lines, right now he's like very scruffed up and just like 
friend almost died, then somehow I got big, then somehow I got inside the, the you know, working on the train, and now I'm out, and just, what were the five last minutes? <laughs> that was a lot, a lot of things that have happened, and it's all pretty overwhelming, so, yeah. <laughs> I think at this point, the camera zooms out as you guys are welcomed into the crowd, and you, some of you, well, one of you reunites with friends. And you then the crowd continues back down the train, continues opening up carriages as it goes along to try and find any people stuck inside, and onwards to whatever finale is awaiting everyone. And we end the session there. Thank you everybody for playing and I hope you had fun. Can I Thank you me? so much? This Can was you? so much fun. I'm so glad. Can I have one, one last uh, scene? Yeah. So, uh, uh, Sigil gives you, he, Sigil gives you a, Sigil gives you her turtle bracelet that she had. She hasn't found an, uh, much use to it, but she thinks that, but it's just like, I think you'll find better use to this than me. And she, and you, you now have a turtle bracelet. Oh my goodness, Hugh is like, Hugh looks at this with sparkly eyes and then he goes to give Sigil a huge hug. Sigil hugs him back. Oh, oh. And, and also, C Cacao is included in the hug because Sigil has not let go yet. <laughs> yes, exactly, same with Hugh. Oh, that's very good. That's very cute. Okay, uh, I changed what I said before. The, we do not zoom out of the crowd as you go along. We zoom out on that wonderful little hug of the three of you because that's the best ending. <laughs> I love those two so much. So good. Oh. It was amazing. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for playing. Uh, does everyone want to say goodbye so I can end the recording? Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.